I was really rather surprised at how much interest there was at, at the jersey repairs kind of thing, but happy to, to share what I do. I, I mean, I do enjoy doing this. It's, it's a lot of fun for weird reasons. Um, so uh, I, I have my next project. I'll be working on the number kit soon enough, but you got to be in the right mindset. Sleeves are rough. I did buy this Vancouver Canucks jersey, the original gradient, uh, and if, if you know, these are not cheap. They're not easy to find anymore. You're talking 120, 140, you're doing well. This one had the crest coming up a little bit. Uh, you can get a finger in behind it in a couple different places. Uh, and because of that, I got it for 40, um, which I think is a heck of a deal, especially since I know how to get these back on. Now, there is also a little bit of damage to this, so we're going to experiment and see if I can make that look a little better than it is, or if it's simply not worth doing. Uh, we'll make that decision as we go, so keep watching here on Loose Threads, part of Ugly Thirds. Uh, let's fix a jersey. All right, so first off, let us look at what we're actually dealing with. So it, the crest is coming up in a few places. That's a terrible view. The, the glue has let go, and uh, as we saw with my starter jersey before, of course, a coho. Um, yeah, there's, there's going to be quite a bit of this. Now, these Canucks logos are well put together on the side, so there's not a lot of fraying like usual, which would make this very easy to fix. Um, this is a bit chunkier. And as such, this damage here... You can see the threads coming up in places. Certainly a lot more thread bare in that spot than, say, most other places. Uh, we're going to look at and see if that's something that can be repaired or if it's better off just leaving it. Because recresting this would be another $25 minimum. And uh, is it worth it? I, I don't honestly know. So let's, let's experiment. Let's find out. Picking a thread, obviously important. I have this silver thread that I've used on uh, Columbus third jerseys and LA Kings jerseys from the uh, early aughts, uh, so that works. Um, silver thread, not the strongest of thing, and so I have a light gray in the bobbin for behind. Uh, when done right, you're not going to see it at all, ever, but uh, it will be stronger than having silver on both sides. I'm told it's hard on machines. I don't exactly know why, but uh, it is... These threads are very, very thin with that, much thinner than you expect. So, um, yeah. Okay, so the first struggle is that most jerseys have a nice, thin twill edge, and simply putting a zigzag stitch on that, like any patch, very, very easy. This does not have that. This is much chunkier silver. And so the question becomes, do we want a standard zigzag or do we want to have something thicker and wider? And so we are absolutely going to test this on a different piece of fabric and see what do we think. Um, and uh, obviously you want to do something more minimal than big in case you want to cover it up. You'll be able to do that. All right, so uh, let's take a piece of test cloth and I have something a bit thicker here because, well, Jersey crests are, and the standard look would be something like this, uh, which you can see nice zigzag uh, in silver, obviously not the usual white, but uh, look, that, that works, but is that like what we have? Uh, and so that's what those are for. Let's try and widen it a bit and shorten it quite a bit and see is that going to be better for what we're trying to do obviously a lot longer to the same distance um, that does look more like what we expect certainly more like what we have on there though not even not wide enough yet but uh, is that going to meld in there or should I try covering the whole width of it I don't know that I should so I want to try something less invasive first and see how noticeable it is but I do think I am going to keep this short in the length okay now I'm going to experiment in the place where we do already have the damage so I don't think uh, we're, we're going to leave without covering it up regardless um but let's see what this does uh, as far as does it does it blend with the crest. In this one, I'm not worried about getting to the edge because this is pretty well set and fused. I don't expect this to fray at any point. Come up, maybe, but you can see more fraying in the crest than off the side of the crest. That is thick. 
Okay, so let's see. Well, you can see it in there, but I mean, that's that's some eagle eye stuff to actually notice it. Um, I don't think anyone would complain about that, though I think I'm going to try and shorten it even a little bit more. I think I'm going to lengthen how long it is between things and see if that makes a difference. So, adjusting. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I like that as much. So I'm going to go back to what I was doing and put it just towards the edge. I feel like it'll feel more natural. Um, I don't think anyone will question at that point. All right, I think I am going to actually try and do this on the edge and see if that helps things because it's not about damage with a lot of this. And that, actually, I think I'm going to change that width a bit and just see if I can ride the edge, and I don't think it's going to matter nearly as much. And when I can get over the side of the crest, that's going to be a good thing. I usually wouldn't be taking this out all the time, but... Yeah, no, I don't think anyone's going to complain about that. That is uh, pretty fair. I imagine if it goes through the wash, you'd never even notice it with the, the holes there as the threads redistribute a bit. Um, that's what I'm going to go with, and so I'm going to keep working on the rest of this crest the uh, whole way around. You always want to have a needle in whenever you are rotating. That way you keep it in line on the machine. We'll clear out the stuff we added earlier. Uh, it's also important to make sure you don't have anything underneath because it's very easy to have it crawl up under and all of a sudden you're stitching the front to the back. Have done that before. Now I am going around the whole jer the whole crest. Not because it needs it, but uh, if the glue is letting off somewhere, it's likely to let off other places. So it doesn't hurt to have it. But probably more importantly, is consistency. Having a consistent stitch the whole way around is going to look better than repair stitches in certain places. So, look, I got the thread. It, it doesn't take me that much longer. Finish the job. Now, I re remember when I first watched videos, I'm like, okay, is this something that, you know, any any idiot can do? And answer, yes. Um, you know, you never want to do turns in any of this stuff. You can't do curves. And I'm like, but there's so many curved things. Like, you kind of have to. Um, and I asked my mom who taught me how to sew. She's like, no, yeah, just be careful with it. Uh, so yeah, when you can stop and corner, stop and corner, but there's no reason you can't do a turn. Just go slowly because that stitch is going to warp just triangles, triangles. I'm going to leave it at that. Really? It's whatever you feel comfortable with. Because sewing is a mix of focus and mindlessness. Like, it's not like deep thought analytical. That's the before. This stuff is, okay, can I focus? And talking during it is probably a terrible idea, if I'm being honest. But, it's... looking closely at this, if, if you look back at the beginning, I mean, obviously, there is a new stitch on the outside. I don't think that's a bad thing. It is uniform. Uh, I always think it looks a bit classier. It's certainly going to stay on better. And then when you look over here, you know, is this worth messing with really for that spot um i think just trimming off some of those loose ends might be the way to go on this uh overall i'm pr fairly happy with how this works because i mean you can see a a stitch happening along here when you're looking at this closely that's not my stitch that's from from the manufacturer and so this i think looks just as good i also did notice that this is starting to come up but do i have a thread for it if i launch it um i mean that's close but i don't know if that's that's as exact as i want it you know on camera it looks pretty good but it's it's it's, it's slightly darker so i think i'm going to hold off on this one and we'll have to rejoin this uh, when Joanne Fabrics is open. All right, day later, dollar shorter, we have 
a new set of thread that better matches this red. And uh, I'm going to take this patch and put it down in this. Even though it has the same puffy edge, I'm far less concerned. Uh, after walking away from it for a day, the crest, I think, looks pretty darn good. So I'm going to set it again so I can uh, run along the edge the entire time, helping to hold this on. And since it's a rectangle, it should be very easy. It's thick enough, double shoulders, I would think, yep, yeah, uh, that it's struggling to push it through. So I'm going to have to do that a bit more manually, a little bit of force, and hopefully keep it nice and even on the pacing. You can hear when it wasn't perfect. When you get a, a double thump, that means I'm on the patch entirely, and I imagine with no thump, I wouldn't be on the patch. But uh, with how this is, it's not fraying, so I'm less worried about it being over... Um, to hold it in this is much more just for securing it and well yeah so the crest from yesterday again unless you're the most eagle-eyed person you're not going to know and how many people know that you're not supposed to have a stitch along the outside edge um hardly anyone i would imagine i'd actually like to see an authentic one of these uh because that might even have that and then of course the patch uh you can see the stitching not perfectly even on this side because it kept getting caught much better over here and here um but again who is going to look at these things it would take uh some real pedantry to want to want to get that in depth on these um but feel free if you ever run into me ask me about my stitching so there you have it, a fixed crest. No more issues with this coming up. I don't think any other issues from the crest that weren't reported when I bought it uh, are worth writing home about, worth trying to, to mess this up. Uh, and now I have a rare jersey for $40 plus a $2 spool of thread. And uh, I think I really came out on top on this one. See, I think I came out on top. So for, for Shrems and Phil, I'm John here on another episode of Ugly Thirds the loose threads addendum uh let me know if this is something you want me to keep doing because i certainly will i got more projects might as well record them right uh thank you don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you next time